Seven years ago, I was in a meeting with a refiner who was very interested in tier three gasoline. We started a research project to address some weak links in tier three technology. The project included pilot plant testing and commercial field testing on gasoline desulfurizers to meet the, the tier three 10 ppm gasoline sulfur specification. Today, I am still talking about clean fuels in the FCC, and my topic is tier three gasoline. This picture of a wolf comes from a previous talk of mine, which Tom Closa from Opus titled Tier 3 Gasoline, A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. It was a great title and it's still applicable today, so I'm sticking with the wolf. I will refer to three categories of FCC refineries. Green with a complete FCC train, yellow with no gasoline desulfurizer, and red with no FCC feed hydrotreater. Green refineries have a huge advantage for making tier three gasoline. Red refineries especially have a huge disadvantage. They lack the FCC feed hydrotreater, which is a high horsepower unit that removes a lot of sulfur and greatly improves the upgrade value and flexibility of the FCC train. Hookster Trading has been publishing work about tier three gasoline and the octane sulfur squeeze since 2017. Today, I'm going to give a short overview of what we were saying in 2017 and in 2019, and then move forward to today. The little timeline on the top of each slide is a reminder of where we are in this story. In 2017, we said an octane sulfur squeeze is coming. The average PPM sulfur in the US gasoline pool was declining slowly from 31 PPM in 2011 toward the tier three requirement of 10 ppm by 2020. Contrary to popular opinion, we showed octane demand and octane price were increasing, and we predicted a large decrease in octane supply when refineries increased desulfurization severity to meet the tier three specification. This chart shows the RON octane loss in an FCC gasoline desulfurizer as a function of the product sulfur level. We read this graph from right to left. As we move from right to left, severity is being increased to reduce product sulfur and octane is being destroyed by side reactions in the gasoline desulfurizer. The red curve from one of our field tests on a commercial unit shows much more octane loss than the industry was expecting. Our pilot plant and field test data consistently showed this difference the octane loss for tier three would be much more than the industry was expecting. Good data and modern tools enable good decisions. From our three-year research project, which included lots of pilot plant and commercial field testing, we developed the performance curve spreadsheet model, which actu accurately calculates octane loss versus product sulfur for any gasoline desulfurizer whose feed we have analyzed with what we call the blood test which is a very detailed hydrocarbon type analysis. The data and tools from this research project were delivered to our clients in three annual reports issued in October of 2015, 2016, and 2017. And they are being used today to optimize gasoline production, decide capital investments, and design new units. And in 2017, we made these predictions about how tier three implementation would play out. Compliance would stall until 2020. Octane price will increase. Latent constraints and bottlenecks will surface in refineries. Refineries will scramble to make up lost octane. Quarterly earnings will be affected. Tier three readiness will be rewarded. Tier three credit liabilities will accumulate. Tier three credit price will soar. That was a high level review of our three year research project completed in 2017 and what we were saying publicly at that time. Now part two, we fast forward to 2019 and you see my little timeline indicator on the top has now shifted to the middle for 2019. In 2019 from a data in a tier three study done by MathPro in 2011, we counted 41% green, 24% yellow, 
and 35% red refineries in the United States. Then we went to EPA's tier three regulatory impact analysis from 2013 and counted the same distribution, which was 39% green, 19% yellow, 42% red. Recognizing the weaknesses of yellow and red refineries for gasoline desulfurization, these industry studies had estimated what would be required to bring the U.S. refining portfolio up to a level that would allow tier three gasoline to be made reliably and profitably in the United States. Those industry studies said the U.S. would need 82 capital investment projects consisting of 16 new builds and 66 revamps of FCC feed hydrotreaters and gasoline desulfurizers. A six-year phase-in was allowed for those investments to occur. It added to $3 billion in capital investment in FCC process trains. Baker and O'Brien estimated it was $10 billion of investment. All this was reported in detail in EPA's regulatory impact analysis in 2013. So in 2019, we asked how much of this necessary investment actually occurred. And the answer is almost none. By our count in 2019, we were still 40% green, 20% yellow, and 40% red refineries. During the six years allowed for tier three capital investment, there were only a handful of projects targeted at what was clearly the weak link for tier three, which is getting sulfur out of FCC gasoline without destroying its octane. So not only was the octane loss going to be higher than expected, but the necessary capital investment did not occur. Given those two findings, what would happen when the day of reckoning arrived? We estimated $10 billion per year worth of octane would be destroyed in gasoline desulfurizers when tier three fully kicks in. How would refineries respond to this? They would face costly adaptations like purchasing octane, downgrading product yields and qualities, and restricting FCC train operations. Purchases, downgrades, and restrictions can allow refineries to cope with the squeeze, but they will take their toll on refining margin and profits. We predicted the costly purchases, restrictions, and downgrades will translate into lower premium gasoline and lower total gasoline production, lower octane barrel production, less crude flexibility, lower refining profit margin, more unplanned shutdowns and credit liabilities, all of which hurt margins. This is what we were saying in 2019. Now fast forward to today. Tier T three has fully kicked in. Where do things stand? The relentless rise in octane value continues. The difference in retail price of premium versus regular gasoline in the United States was 20 cents per gallon or less for decades. Then 10 years ago, it started going up and has not stopped, still hitting all-time highs every week as we speak. Contrary to popular opinion, the demand for octane in the U.S. seems insatiable. And where in U.S. refineries are most of the octane barrels made? In the FCC process train. Where do things stand on our predictions? Compliance did stall until 2020. Octane price did increase. Have constraints and bottlenecks surfaced in refineries? And are refiners scrambling to make up lost octane? I know that's happening in some refineries. In a moment, I'd like to get some input from others in the room about these two predictions. As we will see in a moment, quarterly earnings have been affected, and I will argue that tier three readiness is being rewarded. Tier three credit liabilities have not yet accumulated. Tier three credit price has not yet soared, but it will. Now for the rest of this talk, I will focus on these two predictions. Quarterly earnings will be affected and tier three readiness will be rewarded. This is a metric I call wet margin. It is the value of refined products going out the refinery in a quarter, minus the cost of feedstock going in. 
It is shown here for CVR Energy for the first three quarters of 2021. The orange segment is the cost of crude and other feedstocks, and the green segment is the additional value of refined products going out. I call the green segment wet margin because it is only about the cost and the value of barrels flowing into and out of the refinery. It is similar to refining margin, which is reported in refining companies quarterly 10Q financial reports, but we adjust the refining margin for anything that's not wet and flowing. The green bars show for CBR, the wet margin ranged from 131 million to 248 million per quarter in 2021. Now we are looking back to 2019, skipping 2020, which is the COVID lockdown year. We see in 2019, the green wet margin segments were more than in 2021. And in 2018, they were also more than 2021. We can look at these wet margins on a percentage basis. On a percentage basis, the wet margin in 2018 and 19 was around 20%. And in 2021, it was 12%. This could be called a pre-lockdown versus post-lockdown comparison. But it is also a pre-tier three versus post-tier three comparison. And I believe this is a tier three effect. Because of tier three, the realized margins on products leaving the refinery are lower today. That's my theory. We made this chart for different refiners and compared them. Here is CBR on the left and PBF Energy on the right. PBF shows the same pattern pre versus post tier three as CBR. P PBF sweat margins are lower than CBRs, which is interesting, but my point today is that both companies show lower margin after tier three kicked in. This is some direct evidence that quarterly earnings have been affected by tier three. Is there any evidence tier three readiness is being rewarded? This shows a steadily growing gap between the price of Marathon Petroleum Company stock in green and Phillips 66 stock in red since the first trading day of 2021. Now, some of you are thinking, come on, Hookstra, are you going to claim your tier three theory explains this? Yes, I am going to make that claim. So stick with me here for a few minutes while I make that argument. If we zoom out on this chart, now setting time zero to July 2, 2019, so this now spans nearly three years, we see how these two stocks moved much in tandem until the divergence starts in 2021. In fact, if you look at the 10-year chart, this current divergence stands out as extraordinary even on a 10 year history. What is the cause? I say it is a shift in who is capturing bigger margins on gasoline. This chart is from Phillips quarterly earnings report. It shows refining profit margin in dollars per barrel. The bar on the left is the market crack spread of $17.76. That is Phillips benchmark for the refinery product margin in their market area. The rightmost bar shows that Phillips only captured $3.92, $3.92 of that $17.76. The red and green bars between the market margin and realized margin show the factors contributing to that difference. The big sore point is the red bar labeled other. It continues to draw the attention of financial analysts in quarterly earnings conference calls. It is twice as big as the realized margin. What is that? According to Phillips, the other category is mostly RIN costs and clean product differentials. I will not discuss RIN costs today unless you want to do that later. What is meant by clean product differentials? Kevin Mitchell, Phillips chief financial officer, says product differentials which is the difference between the market indicator and actual product realizations, that one can move around and go both directions on us. 
during the quarter, those differentials we were not getting, seeing the value for some of those premium products. This fits precisely the tier three theory. So you see not only I believe my theory, so does Kevin Mitchell. Post tier three, the naphtha being produced by the refineries is much more, much less valuable. It is a difficult new gasoline specification that is so suddenly limiting the ability to make marketable on spec high octane gasoline or downgrading the yield or octane of half your gasoline pool or requiring you purchase alkalate or refinement from others. You will keep making gasoline molecules, but you will not realize the premium market margin on them. And if you have green refineries with big cat feed hydro treaters and gasoline desulfurizers, you can still make your own tier three gasoline at low incremental cost out of cheap FCC feeds. So yes, I say the cause of this divergence is the tier three specification, which has handcuffed Philips' ability to capture the market margins on gasoline, while Marathon has refineries that can do that quite easily. What can red refiners do to address this competitive weakness? First, now is the time to re-examine tier three strategy. Our clients have used the results of our research to immediately improve their margins by unit optimization and by choosing better catalysts without investing capital. Though it is not politically popular today, there should also be some capital investments in FCC trained hydro treaters to improve margin capture on the non-renewable fuels that are still the foundation of refining profit. While not wanting to be too critical of Philip 66, I must note their capital investment budget this year is $2 billion, none of which is aimed at improving margin on non-renewable fuels beyond required maintenance and turnarounds. Why not invest some of the two billion to improve refining yields and margin capture? Even a fraction of $2 billion would help a lot. Improved 21st century processes are available like Topso's high octane technology, which is a selective hydro treating process that reduces octane loss by 40%. That improvement is represented here by the purple curves compared to the black curves representing the 1990s technology being used at most refineries today. Shifting this performance curve up, like the purple curves, can save 40% of the octane being lost with tier three. And even before that, refiners should be using the data and tools from our research to help optimize gasoline production and make the best investment decisions. These tools were developed for refiners specifically for the 21st century tier three world and are available to anyone at negligible cost. I believe tier three is causing 10 billion per year in octane destruction in the US today. This is shifting refining margin dollars to refiners best equipped for tier three. And this is evident in refining margins and stock prices. Good solutions are available for those wanting to immediately improve octane sulfur performance in their FCC process trains. Whatever spending you would consider from $75,000 to $2 billion. A good next step for your company is to buy one of our research reports on tier three gasoline and use it to help update your tier three strategy. I suggest the third one, the most recent of the three annual reports we released. It is very easy to do. You just sign a purchase order and we deliver it at the speed of light. Find one profit-minded leader in your company to step up and sign a purchase order. It is very good work on an important topic that has been on the industry's back burner too long. The report costs $75,000, which is a small fraction of the cost of the research and only about one minute's worth of your company's annual revenue. I'll be here today and tomorrow. Please see me and I'll send you a link to the offer letter. Thanks a lot for your attention.